Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a fantastic day. At the moment, Ledger is having a 21% off deal on a three pack of their Ledger Nano S's. While I do not work for Ledger, I am an affiliate and I have an affiliate link in the description below if this interests you. Have a little click, look around. Thank you very much and without further ado, let's jump right into it. There's a lot going on in the news today. It is very weird what can happen over the course of a 24-hour period. It says Bitcoin's price consolidates breaking $37,500 resistance level. This one says Bitcoin holds near $38,000, faces pressure after the events we've been talking about over the last two days on this channel are currently still taking shape and potentially also literally advancing uh, forward. The really weird news is, at the moment, the cryptocurrency market is reacting how it would have reacted years ago. The cryptocurrency market is currently in green. I think some of the altcoins are up anywhere from 8 to 12 to 15%. It is quite nice to see because normally, if you have uh, recently entered the cryptocurrency market or the cryptocurrency space, Historically, any time that negative things have happened around the world or in politics or even with the economy, uh, Bitcoin normally goes upward. As in, if something negative is happening with fiat currencies, well, the digital currencies tend to go the opposite direction. It says technical analysis, Ethereum primed for a strong recovery, and only one thing is holding it back. It's Bitcoin. Spoiler it's just Bitcoin actually moving up because this tells us that the rest of the market is capable of moving up. If Bitcoin is up by 3 to 4% and a lot of the altcoins are up anywhere between 8, 4, 9, 10, 13, 14, 15%, they're clearly able to do this on a daily basis. It's just a matter of Bitcoin actually making the first move. It says Bitcoin's price could probe lower as volumes dip and macroeconomic issues loom overhead this is pretty much a a no brainer as 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 people say um other markets are not faring too well i'm pretty sure i also have them somewhere around here as well the cryptocurrency market could do a completely Full recovery, it's just a matter of, and I know I say logic a lot, and I know I see people saying logic to me on Twitter because I always say logic all the time, but it's just completely what it actually is because even while all of this is going on, we still are dealing with high levels of inflation and other fiat currencies collapsing every single day. It's just that this one thing just happens to be taking the actual spotlight at least at this moment. On top of that, there was a lot of talk about like a, a big Cardano something happening. Cardano is going to be moving. Cardano is actually one of the uh, top coins moving up right now. Uh, where's the actual really important part? Ba -ba 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 -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. At the time of writing, it's at 87 cents. Cool, cool, cool. Here we go. It says Bitru, that is B I T R U E, a popular cryptocurrency exchange, recently tweeted. That it has major Cardano news in the works. They said our big ADA news is coming soon, but we've got an extra bonus for you today after hearing your voices of support. Cardano is coming to yield farming and having a 25% APY. Uh, hello, friend out there, if you are watching. We keep discussing because I know we can't be the only ones. We're also looking at not other investment opportunities, you know, other avenues to invest, but just other things to see exactly what's kind of out there. But the cryptocurrency market is so weird because in nothing in traditional finance can you get a 25% annual yield. It just doesn't actually exist. So how they're getting 25%, I'm not exactly 1,000% sure, but that's an incredibly large number, not affiliated. It's just literally they are actually... In the news, it says, get ready to invest on the 25th of February. You won't find rates this high anywhere else. That much I can definitely promise you. Bitrue has previously stated it would make a special announcement shortly after the Sunday listing to highlight its true support for Cardano. In other big news, Bitrue has announced uh, the next phase of the Cardano support will begin on the 24th of February with the debut of Akafmam, Ak Akamfi. O-C-C-A-M-F-I. 
BitRu has been a vocal supporter of Cardano's efforts to be the first trading platform to permit the trade of Cardano's native assets. Um, and also, there is a law practice in the United Kingdom who has announced that they are going to be accepting Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Cardano as payment for their services. So, like a really weird ball of Cardano news, a big bundle all at the exact same time. Uh... I do assume that this is the reason why Cardano's price is the highest, or rather the moving up the quickest within the top 10 right now. Very nice to see, you know, Logic actually playing a really big part because we've gotten consistent good news over the last couple of months. Maybe if you bundle it all together, there's literally been like two days of like bad news actually going around in the cryptocurrency space. We should be a lot higher in prices right now. But, you know, whales and all that kind of stuff. And also in the price news as well. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says the S&P 500 has entered into its first correction in two years. As the thing we were talking about the last couple of days, which is clearly the reason why every single market was dropping, continues to escalate. So, um, I do wholeheartedly believe that if... This disappears or dwindles away. I think all markets are going to skyrocket. Um, we were discussing yesterday, me and my friends, uh, a lot of stocks are down by like 50 and 60%. It's really, and it's not even weird. This is just completely overdue, long overdue. Yeah, yeah, long overdue. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the correct term. Uh, because these markets have been going up for 15 years with no actual movement downward. If you look at anything on the stock charts, Anytime that they had a movement downward, it lasted for maybe two weeks. And then, like, it, you know, skyrocketed back up once again, which doesn't make a lot of sense, especially after what's been going on for the last two years. So, anyway, uh, bringing it on back, um, this is just the, the, the hand we've been dealt. Hopefully, things get better uh, because this is literally nearly a non issue. This should not be happening especially as we are finally getting out of a mess that we've been in for the last two years. Why create another situation that is just going to, you know, why? Anyway, that's all the price news as of right now. The cryptocurrency market is currently in the green. So let's hope that we continue to have a good week. That would be nice. All righty. Let's move on. Here we go. In the most popular news story of the day, in December 2020, the US SEC filed a lawsuit against Ripple and its chief executives, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson. According to the SEC, Ripple traded $1.3 billion in XRP as a security without notifying the commission. Ripple and other parties have now rebuted the watchdog's judgment with claims of bias. Several significant court actions have occurred over the last year with a series of back-to-back -back petitions filed by both sides after being granted, either being granted or, or rejected. Basically, at some point during the lawsuits, the SEC has been filing, and I mean an enormous... So, Ripple has come forth with, like, documents saying, hey, we have, you know, so-and-so-and-so... Look at what the SEC has done. We have done the exact same thing as every other cryptocurrency blockchain coin company. Why are we being singled out? And now we have news that the SEC nearly all the time, I'm not in the courtroom myself, I'm giving you the news that's you know been given to me, that the SEC is constantly filing new motions trying to make sure to either stop Ripple from releasing a pertinent information or simply by trying to extend the lawsuit longer on than it has to actually be in the year since the sec sued ripple the form the financial community has been divided over the legitimacy of the regulators claims we've gone over that thousands of times because it doesn't make any sense that ripple and xrp were active for six years and then out of the blue they decide to simply announce oh 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 sorry you've been doing something wrong for the last six years because they clearly do not care about actual people within the U.S. and consumer protection. It's more the SEC trying to get trophies, which I'm also going to go over in a couple of seconds. While a number of new twists and turns have occurred in the case since 2020, no substantial rulings have yet been rendered. In any case, 
The most recent developments suggest that Ripple is on the winning side for now, as it won a number of significant motions that could be crucial to its fair motion defense. Specifically, the court ruled last week in favor of Ripple unsealing two important documents that the company argued would offer some kind of assurance on how the agency categorized XRP when it initially circulated in 2012. Think about that, which means that the SEC probably should have, especially if it's for consumer protection, had it on its radar. But they wait eight years to actually say anything. Mm -hmm. Now, during a recent podcast with Thinking Crypto's Tony Edward, Joseph Hall, the former SEC managing executive for policy, discussed the status of the case how it has progressed so far, and what to expect moving forward. He said, I'm not sure what the SEC intends to prove in the XRP action either, Hall said, adding that he remains baffled as to why the SEC brought the case in the first place. He said the Ripple Network has been operational for years prior to the filing of a lawsuit against them at the last minute. The ramifications for the SEC and the crypto business is generally in general, are enormous. If the SEC loses this, they will have lost all credibility. They have very little right now, especially not even when it comes to the actual Bitcoin ETF discussion. Just in general, over the last couple of years, I thought for a while that it was simply haphazard. Maybe they were doing too many other things in the background. We know for a fact that the cryptocurrency market is well on their radar. There's no discussion about that at any point because we even knew that the CFTC was also looking deep into the cryptocurrency market as well. And with the SEC stomping around on anything that they can possibly do, we know that for a very long time they've had the cryptocurrency market in their sights, if you will. One of the really weird parts is that starting around 2018, for those of you who remember, we had a lot of different cryptocurrencies, a lot of different coins, a lot of uh, messaging apps who were also going to be releasing their cryptocurrencies as well. The really weird part for me started to be whenever we, now we are, I, I would say we are the public. We are not the institution itself and we are not the regulators. The fact that we had news that many of these uh, companies, these messaging apps, we're going to be releasing a digital currency, a cryptocurrency, whatever you decide to call it. And we knew that information for two years. And a lot of them on the date of them announcing their launch, so like they would say random numbers. Hey, it's December so-and-so. We are going to be launching this coin sometime in May. Everyone get ready. And we would wait for this thing to actually launch. And then on the date of their launch... The U.S. SEC would come forward and go, oh, this is a security. We have to, we got to take you guys in now. And it's like, but you, but you knew this. You knew that they were going to do this the entire time. Why did you wait for so long? According to Hall, the SEC has a lot riding on this lawsuit and their entire regulatory effort may be effectively shut down if they fumble on the merits, Ripple has a strong defense on the grounds that the SEC failed to give fair notice of the investigation. Yeah, for those of you who don't know that, you are required to be notified by the U.S. SEC if they feel like something is amiss. Eight years, nothing, and on the last day of the former U.S. SEC's uh, head honcho, on his last day, that's when he files a lawsuit against them with no prior notice to Ripple. I have believed for a very long time, this is my speculation, having been in the cryptocurrency market for a number of years, it is abundantly clear that money not only moves markets, but money also moves people. I would not be shocked at all if in five or ten years we have evidence, a movie, a documentary that basically says that behind the scenes there was some type of mo money that was moving around that entered into the hands of people. Even now, to this day, regardless of what altcoin you love, these coins still do not have regulatory clarity. Why is it that only Bitcoin and Ethereum have regulatory clarity and every other coin is still in this? It's not even a gray area. It's there somewhere in, in, in Deep Space Nine because the US SEC refuses. Like it, it, it would be so much more, it would make so much more sense if we had it, if you know that Solana, Chainlink, Cardano, any other major coin out there that is super popular right now has no regulatory clarity. How much do you want to bet at some point the US SEC is going to target one of these companies and go, 
You've been selling this as a security for the last six years. Why didn't you why didn't you inform us? When they know exactly what this coin is, how many people are using it? Because they've also partnered with these other companies who do all the blockchain analytics. So they know exactly what's going on. Anyway, as it stands right now, uh, once again, to not I mean, th this article actually continues on for a very long time. So not to give you uh, you know, just to talk about this one thing for but this is the most popular news story of the day. A lot of people are constantly sitting there quite confused. I think it would make the most sense if the SEC just dropped the lawsuit at this point because we know that it's it's all a complete lie. They're trying to have another trophy. If you've never looked at their Twitter, their Twitter is basically weird. They they post every two days that they've won a lawsuit against someone who they've uh, claimed has done something. But it's not like we've done this to help people. It's like, hey, look at how much money we got from them. Look at what we did. Look how look how much power we have in the regulatory space. And it it's it's all a little there's once again. Don't assume that any regulator around the world would not do something because of cash. Why is it that out of 10,000 coins, and I'm going to say a good 40 of them are actually really popular and have high trading volumes. And we know that people around the world are using them all the time. If you know that Solana, Chainlink, and Cardano are not securities based on the Howey test, which is nearly 100 years old right now, why not provide that information right now? Why continue to wait longer than everyone else has to wait for? It's because they're trying to show that they have power in the market but alas, so yeah, the SEC keeps filing extra motions in court, clearly trying to delay the entire procedure of them losing. It says Ripple versus SEC is the SEC deliberately trying to delay Ripple lawsuit rulings, especially because the people from Ripple showed last week that they've been trying since 2012 to get in contact with regulators and also other lawyers to say, hey, this is what we're doing. How do we change it to make sure that it does not that it is not a security in any possible way. The SEC knows exactly what's going on. Um, and then on top of that, um, there are always new twists and turns in the SEC's lawsuit against Ripple Labs. One aspect that keeps resurfacing concerns um, comments made by the SEC's former director of operation finance, William Hinman. In a 2018 speech, Hinman had opened that Ether is not a security. While Ripple has continued to use this point to reiterate that XRP would fall into the same category. For those of you who were not here, I mean, you want to talk about a really annoying time in the cryptocurrency market. The SEC popped out of nowhere, basically at the end of 2017, declaring that they had some type of uh, way to be able to regulate the entire market. Everyone's like, who are you? What have you, you, you haven't been in the market for this entire time. Why do you think you can regulate everything? And they basically began to announce that they thought that certain things were security. So a lot of coins kind of basically came together and they were like, ex what exactly constitutes a security? And from what we know from the Howey test is that people buy something with the expectation of profit. And people were like, well, that basically constitutes every single cryptocurrency. We are buying Bitcoin because we expect its price to go up. We are buying Ether with the expectation of its price going up because of Ethereum 2.0. And then they basically changed it to, well, it basically goes off of how decentralized you are. How many nodes you have. If you run all the nodes, then therefore, you know, yabba, 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 yabba. And this is when a lot of other coins began to also announce, hey, we're adding extra nodes. We have nodes now in China. We have nodes in Japan. We have nodes in here. And everyone was spreading out their nodes as far as possible. A lot of coins kind of like lightly rebranded, et cetera, et cetera. And for some reason, the only coins that got the go ahead from the US SEC were the two largest coins that have the most money inside of them and have the most millionaires backing them as well. Like I said, it's very weird because you would assume that the SEC would have announced for the top 10 coins hey, this, 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 and this, we clear, these are clearly securities. This, 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 and this. You guys go on your way. But in all these years of the cryptocurrency market, only two coins have been given the go-ahead, regardless of all the other lawsuits also going on. During a recent Ask Me Anything, Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson also shared a similar opinion with the executive saying that this flip-flopping has fueled more ambiguity than ever before because Cardano still has no word either. 
Arguing that it is unfair of the industry for regulators to keep changing their stance, he said, and I quote, If it's a personal opinion, you issue a statement after the fact, but you can't just let it ride. Let opinions be written out and have the industry push forward and then change your mind because it's convenient for, for a particular in case, uh, enforcement case that you are doing. This is all about money. I Listen, I do not know if this is true. I'm going to assume this is a heavy assumption. Somebody was paid for something because it's it's all a little bit too weird that this keeps happening over and over and over. It's happened for multiple coins over the course of the last couple of years, uh, and there's still no proper regulatory cr- clarity from the US SEC. So yeah, this was the most popular news story of the day. Here's the actual thing from Kick as well. Remember, we used to always talk about the the Kick coin. I, I think it was called Kin from Kick. And I think the day that they were going to launch it, we knew that they were going to launch this. Me, 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 you, me and you, right here, us. We knew for two years that they were going to launch this. And the moment they did, the SEC was like, oh, you guys, mm, no, it's a security. How did, how did they get the memo last? How did the people who are regulating supposed to be protecting U.S. consumers, how did you get the letter in the mail last when we all got it two years before? Anyway, that's the XRP Ripple SEC news. Um, I won't lie. I would love if they lost this lawsuit, not only because I think this has been dragged on for, <laughs> it's, it's been two years now, uh, but also it completely makes no sense. Why, why are they doing this? It's always just for money and just to prove that they are, you know, strong enough to be able to regulate the rest of the industry. Because I... Bet you, if they win this lawsuit, I don't know how, if the judge doesn't uh, follow logic and maybe, you know, money's moving around, if if, if if the SEC wins this lawsuit, expect at least five other popular coins to get the exact same lawsuit treatment immediately, without a doubt. This would, this would encourage and empower them in ways that we've never seen, and I'm certain that some of the largest coins would immediately get the same exact ripple treatment, even though these coins have been in the market going on four years for some of them. Anyway, that's the uh, most popular news story of the day. Um, yeah, a lot more to say, but I won't say. And yeah, let's move on. In the second most popular news story of the day, Coinbase, the largest crypto exchange in the United States in terms of trading volume, has announced a partnership with Ledger or has added support for Ledger, a popular crypto hardware wallet. The Ledger wallet integration is now available through the Coinbase wallet browser extension, providing users with an additional layer of security. The move comes at the time when adoption for NFTs and DeFi and the broader crypto industry is gaining serious momentum every single day. How often do we hear about this? They said, there's no future in Web3 without security at the start of the consumer journey. This was said by the vice president of Ledger. With billions of transactions happening every month, no matter what or why you trade and hold, we believe every user deserves world-leading security and ease of use. Coinbase and Ledger... Partnering embraces this for crypto and NFT communities. I, myself, use Ledger. I think they are absolutely incredible. I tried before other hardware wallets. I will not name them. They did not work. I did not care for them. The interfaces were not that good. So the Ledger partnership with Coinbase just seems to make a lot of sense as Ledger, I believe, is the largest hardware wallet provider out there and have done a very good job over the last couple of years, not patting them on the back, but it's more like a, I like buying something and seeing that it actually works as opposed to buying something and be like, I don't know how this is actually working at all. Very popular news when you have, I guess, two powerhouses in the crypto industry joining together for, as they say, an extra layer of security. Not really much news here, except for that, you know, I I think when we live in a time where everything, especially if you don't know, a lot of the issues that a lot of people have with cryptocurrency exchanges is that sometimes you can't get your money off. You have trouble moving your money around on certain things, but with a ledger, you you control it. It's yours. It's on the device. 
and can't be moved basically unless you say so. So any extra layer of security in uh, this futuristic world of ours is always very much appreciated. Yeah, that's the Coinbase and Ledger popular news. And let's move on. <clears throat> also in the news, Thailand is gaining momentum in the cryptocurrency market as retailers and real estate developers start to accept cryptocurrencies. Instead of trying to slow down the rate of adoption of cryptocurrency among citizens of Thailand by banning crypto trading and mining, the country's governing bodies are putting a regulatory framework in place. Mm, I wish some other place would do the exact same thing, but I can't can't figure out where. This framework would implement a 15% capital gains tax on profits from cryptocurrency trading, according to an anonymous source inside the finance ministry who disclosed information to the Bangkok Post last month, stating that all taxpayers, investors, and mining operations who gained from cryptocurrencies will be subject to a 15% holding tax. Listen, 15% as far as as long as I've been doing the news, 15% is the lowest second lowest number that we've seen next to zero. You know, you can't really can't really match zero. Uh 15% is not bad at all, especially when you have other countries who announced that they're going to have 40 and 50% taxes. First of all, I've I've also heard many times that Thailand is beautiful and relatively inexpensive. So it's like, would you rather live in a cold country where it's always raining and you can't really go outside for like six months because it's constantly snowing? Or in a beautiful country where food is inexpensive and so is living and you have a 15% tax? Thailand's central bank has also expressed its intention to trial a central bank digital currency in the second quarter of this year. Furthermore, the country will launch its own utility token, the TAT token, which is planned on, uh, which is part of a planned crypto tournament. Tourism. tourism campaign, and apparently the latest de development in Thailand is that the Thailand Stock Exchange will have support for digital assets that will allow traders to trade with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Why is it so easy for other countries to do this and other places not? Why is it so difficult to announce, hey, you can use crypto for anything. You can buy stuff with it, even real estate. We, we're going to charge you because we're a country and we like to charge people stuff, but it's only 15%. It's not 50 like those guys. Why is, why, is, why is it so easy for others and not others? Anyway, that's the Thailand news. Um, good for them. I mean, any country that is not banning it and allowing it has a thumbs up for me, especially when they realize the amount of money. I assume Thailand's going to be making a lot of money in the next couple of years because if you regulate it, and people know they can go there and pay low taxes on it. Well, I mean, you're going to get all the money and all the people. That's just how logic works. Anyway, that's the Thailand news. Congratulations. And yeah, let's move on. And to finish things off in... All right. Grayscale Investments, the world's largest digital asset manager, has launched a campaign... Aimed at convincing, once again, guess who? The US SEC to approve its Bitcoin spot ETF application. Grayscale is seeking to convert its $25.7 billion Bitcoin trust into a Bitcoin spot ETF. We've heard about this many times, but apparently Grayscale is trying to ramp up their efforts. Grayscale Investments announced on Tuesday... The launch of a campaign to educate and encourage American investors to submit comments on its application with the SEC to convert Grayscale's Bitcoin trust to a spot Bitcoin ETF. GBTC is the company's largest investment product with $25.7 billion in assets under management. Now, I'm going to say something. Hear me out on this one. I have nearly zero hope in the US SEC actually doing the right thing. For those of you who don't know, the Winklevoss twins have been trying to launch a spot Bitcoin ETF since 2013, 2014. I can kind of see after Bitcoin being around for four or only five years that the SEC would go, mm, yeah, it's kind of new, I don't really trust it. But it's been like 13, 14 years at this point. So, if you happen to have the time 
anytime today, I assume as, as soon as possible, and you believe that the USSEC should approve or transition Grayscale's Bitcoin trust into a Bitcoin ETF, like I said, hear me out. Write them an email. Write them a letter. You can actually go into the um, the US SEC's uh, website and you actually find the actual uh, case of this. You click on it and you're able to submit a comment. If you have an extra three to five minutes in your day, do this. And I say this for one reason. I do not assume that the US SEC is going to, in the next three years, actually allow any Bitcoin ETF to go through because I think a lot of stuff that I won't say right now, but if you watch the channel, you understand. There's Once again, the other point being, we heard two days ago that already 200 people had emailed or sent letters to the US SEC saying, hey, approve this. 200. Normally for other SEC cases, you get literally one or two comments. There's a big difference between two comments and 200 comments. If you happen to have three to five minutes out of your day today to have time to be able to write to the SEC because you believe that we should finally have a spot Bitcoin ETF, send them a letter, send them an email. Why do I say this? Because I have a strange feeling. If we could get, we could literally get hundreds, around 900, maybe even 1,200 people to comment and or send them letters which is probably the most that they are ever going to get ever for anything, and they would still deny this Bitcoin ETF because they know that they're not going to allow it through. It's more of a, I want to see exactly um, how hypocritical they actually are because they know that they're not going to let this through. If you were any, if you had every single time that you were thinking of allowing any type of futures or any type of ETF for anything across the board that anything that the SEC actually uh, surveys, and you always get one to two people writing, but you get 200 comments and still go, mm, I don't know. I don't know what the public is thinking. So if you have time, write the SEC, uh, let them know how you feel and if, if they should actually allow this to go through, because I'm curious. If you, if you know other, uh, or if you are one, other crypto YouTubers, ask them to do the same. Ask them to tell other people who are watching their channels to, to sub submit how they feel about this Bitcoin ETF. Because I'm, I'm curious to see if we got over 1,000 people to send a letter or an email to the SEC, they would still reject it. I, I know that they would. And you all know that they would as well because they don't actually care about this. They're still trying to see exactly how long. We, we, we spoke about this in 2018. The SEC is trying to see how long they can make people wait so that when they finally do approve one, they can say, I am generous. You, you can, yes, you can finally have, I know it's taken us years, but you know, it was all worth it. As opposed to, what was it? Bulgaria just got seven of them and the US still doesn't have one. The application was filed on the 19th of October by the New York Stock Exchange, ARCA. The exchange that will list and trade shares of the new Bitcoin ETF if approved. On the 15th of December, the SEC designated, designated a longer period to consider their application. Wink. On the 4th of February, the commission asked the public for comments on the application. The way that the SEC works is that uh, they, 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 they're given a certain time frame. And at the end of the time frame, they're allowed to extend uh, their decision, which is nonsense because they know that they're going to say no. And they've said no over 100 times already in the last 10 years. So they always wait an extra couple of months and then they go, hmm, I simply do not know. And then on the last day, happens every single time, the crypto market ends up going up by around 4 to 5% in anticipation of the US SEC finally doing the right thing, they announce it, the market ends up going down for about a good four or five days, which sounds like manipulation, but you know. Anyway, that's the grayscale is asking the public, and I am asking you, if you happen to have an extra three to five minutes of your day, uh, and you want this Bitcoin ETF to go through, because the idea is, you know, logic doesn't really exist on this planet anymore. There are at least, I believe, over 15 at least 
different actual spot Bitcoin ETFs that already exist on the planet. With many companies and institutions and stock exchanges now holding a billions of dollars in each fund. That means they're buying up tons of Bitcoin. But our market doesn't move because for some reason, everyone's waiting on the US SEC to approve a US Bitcoin exchange traded fund. And the idea is that this is when we would reach brand new all-time highs over $100,000. So if you want Bitcoin to move up and you believe in this fund, here you go. Here's here's your chance. Uh, but I do repeat, I am certain. I think we could have, and I mean 15, listen, I think we could have 15,000 people writing them and they would still reject this, which would then lead to the question, what more do you need? Uh-huh. Let's move on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, GBU Wally, formerly known as Professor Wally, Darren Davis, How's Life Austin, Jamie Saad, Blockchain Simplified, and let's move on, Chris, Hakeem Wilkins, Empire Queen, Staking with Valor, Fud, Wiser, Mortified, uh, Roman Geba, Bitcoin Ben Arachno Dave, Tony Ambroski, The Dealers Den, Red Plump Tomato, Umnu, Wish Nikki, The Letter M, Not Brain, Captain Something in the Z Way, Lay Crypto, Black Sheep, AJ Cut 5, Speedy 655. And Carlos was like, Mobarazi, JoJo Shaw Show, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grillet, Lauren De Silva, Quoted Biddy, Bare Bones Mining, Troy All Good, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Paternoster, Conan, Don't Skip Leg Day, Snacky Chan, Totally Panano, Auspicious Agile, and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari. Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Martin Stoyo, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, Bibliophobia, Todd, Mullis, Adam, Gracek, Mohamaroni, Master Ventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Knight, Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cold D, 3D, Damien, Setsuna, Richie Richard III, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mann, Gia Lavori, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Midli, Miller Hitch Test, Miller Hitch Test Every Day, and Cow Skips Leg Day, Yes to Crypto, Bodie McBoatface, Anytime Fitness, Monks, Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger of Macho Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel, Crayola Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Thank you all very much for your continued support. Thank you to everyone out there who is a member of the channel who clicked the little join button below. Thank you to everyone who is a clicker of affiliate links, who has bought some art in the last couple of days. I do thank the everyone who has left a like, has left a comment. I tip my digital hat in your direction at the moment. There we go. Bitcoin is currently at $38,917. It is up by 3.84%. Ethereum is up by 5%. Binance Coin is up by 4%. Cardano is up by 7. It was up by 10. It's a little, a little slivering sideways over there. Luna is up by 13%. Avalanche is up by 11.5. Ironically, because it's supposed to be an avalanche and going the other way. Shiba Inu is up by 7. Kronos? Wasn't this crypto coin? Kronos is up by 9.7%. Litecoin is up by 6. Polygon is up by 8%. Cosmos is up by 7 Anything else crazy happening? Decentraland is up by 8.3. Phantom is up by 8.7. Okay. Ethereum Classic is up by 7. Hedera Bar Hashgraph Bar Graph is up by 10.68 percentile points at the moment. Anything else? The market's in green. And uh, what's his face? Um, the, come, come, Adam? What's the name of that coin? The one that they have a tangle... Mutant Mutant X? No, I can't. Iota. Iota's not in the top. Mutant X. Iota's not in the top 49 anymore. Anyway, I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Let me know if you are going to be contacting the SEC because I would love to see how this plays out. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, and or supporting, and I will most certainly uh, be talking to you all soon. See ya.